Hey Parasites and welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog and I am out she outside where they're filming Venom 2 right now. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're gonna do something that isn't really that new, but I rarely do it uh, on here at least, is calling out bad journalism. I've done it a couple times, obviously, uh, but uh, but this case, I just wanna preface this by saying before we dive into this, that this is not me just trying to tear movie web, the website down, or the gentleman, I won't say his name, but it's it's you know it's on the article, but uh, you know, I don't wanna, I'm not trying to tear them down. I've made mistakes before, so this is coming from a place that, hey, look, I've made a similar mistake. I made an episode of the Venom Vlog where the person I made it on, I actually reached out to them, wanted to interview them. They kind of, they never responded to me, so I went and did as much research as I could on what type of job they have, and then I made a video about it, uh, and then like five months after I posted the video, they contacted me and said, hey, I don't like your video, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't represent certain things the right way and I said okay I'm, I'm willing to listen like please tell me what I got wrong and really the guy was just kind of a douchebag and he was talking down to me and he was like look you know I yeah I got your email here it's, I saw you emailed me like three you know a couple months before you put up the video but you know you're kind of a nobody like in, in more or less words that's what he was saying to me he's like you're a nobody and uh, Sony's never going to give you the time of day so why should I give you the time of day and I'm like wow, okay, dude, th uh, thanks, I guess. Like, I mean, I got to meet Tom Hardy and put, <laughs> he was on the show, so like, uh, but sure, okay, you're better than me, I get it. But I, but all that aside, I, as much as that frustrated me, the one thing he said to me, which was, I, I you know, I understand that feedback, which is, he said, you got a couple details about what my job is wrong, and I do not want to put out fake information or or, or, or or not accurate information, I should say. I tried my best. I did that, that job was a hard job to research and I thought it was a neat job and that's why I wanted to bring it to your guys' attention. And then I even asked the guy again, well, hey, I'll delete that episode, but can I interview you some? And he's like, no. And I'm like, okay, so you're just going to be a D-bag. And I'm like, well, that's fine. But, uh, but I still took it down because it was the right thing to do if it has information in it that's not accurate so ego aside you know it's like okay i got it dude i got it wrong um so i apologize and um and so this is coming this feedback that i'm going to give you movie web and this person who wrote this article if you happen to ever see this i doubt you will on the small channel uh, but that's also where my frustration comes from you have a bigger reach than i do and you should be doing better and i'm sure you have examples and this person who wrote this article has examples of them doing good journalism but this is just my opinion about how I think this is very bad journalism. And it's coming from a place who's made similar mistakes before. So just understand, this is me more or less trying to help you out in a way. And I know on social media, I can come across very blunt. And I can, you know, I'll say things like garbage website, things like that. I get heated because like I said, you got this big platform. And then I see, you know, like I'll comment like, hey, I think you guys got this wrong. I get no response. So I'm like, okay, well now you're definitely garbage because you're not even responding to people. Like there's no, I see a lot of these websites, they don't actually interact with people unless the people compliment them. But if someone challenges them, they either mute them or block them or they just, you know, walk away from them or ignore them or whatever. And that's frustrating. It's like you have to have an open dialogue with your viewers and the people who check out your content, whether they're new or old, uh, because that interaction is a good thing that helps your, your, your channel grow, your page grow. Even if you're already big, it helps you continue to grow and it shows like some real... Um, you know, a c communication there. And that's what people want a lot of times when they get information about movies. So this is just some negative criticism for movie web. And we're going to start off, and like I said, but it comes from, hopefully, you know, you feel it comes from a good place, but it is coming from someone who made similar mistakes. So I'm, I'm just trying to help out. Um, but here's why I think you guys did a bad job and why in this particular article, not all your articles, but in this particular article, why I think you did a very bad job. Um, we got to go back a couple days ago. Vanity Fair put out this article, that uh, which is what MovieWeb is sourcing here. And I'll put a link to both articles down below so you can read them side by side yourself and check out what I'm going to show you. And I'll even have a couple screen grabs pop up uh, on screen as well while we're going over this. Um, but what we have here is an interview from Vanity Fair. Let's start there. And they're talking to producers and directors and people who work in the, in the movie industry um, who are thinking about the obstacles they have to face when they come back to work, right? Like, uh, you know, you have actors who have to be on set right next to each other on screen. Obviously, we have a six-foot rule with, you know, the virus and everything. And, you know, you have crew members running around and stuff, you know, breathing on each other and everything. And, and, uh, and the virus could spread pretty quickly on a movie set, basically, or a TV show set. So these are people that work in different parts of the industry talking about what the challenges are. So I saw this article, 
And I was like, well, I'm not going to make a video on it. Even though they talked to two producers from Venom, Let There Be Carnage, there's not any real information here about Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Not really. Uh, all Other than them saying that it's in post-production. And for some reason, MovieWeb decided to completely... Like, maybe they just grazed over this article, took some of the quotes, and then they just created their own headline. I mean, this is a prime example of misinformation. And I feel like intentional misinformation. I don't know if this was an accident. I think these guys legitimately wanted to put a bogus article out there because they don't care. They don't care about their work, their work ethic, their job, how it reflects on them, uh, or putting out misinformation. They don't care at all because they're like, eh, if we want to, maybe we'll update it later. But I see this kind of behavior with a lot of websites, and I've seen it before with movie web. So I am kind of directing a little bit of hate to them and throwing some shade at them, but I feel like it's justified in this case at least. So what we have, we have Hutch Parker, uh, who's one of the producers. We talked about him before. He's, he's one of the newer producers. He didn't work on Venom 1, but he's on Venom Let There Be Carnage. And, uh, and so they were talking to him, Vanity Fair was like, hey, so what's kind of your, you know, approach to this? Like, what, what's your thought process? And he's like, well, I've talked to some people who are like, you know what, I'm taking a year off, I'm just sitting this out. Um, and then, you know, said, said Hutch, who was also, you know, produced uh, Logan, a couple other movies for 20th Century Fox and New Regency. And he says, it's particularly uh, some old actors, older actors, who don't want to put themselves more at risk. Others seem a little bit more confident uh, and a little bit more eager. It does feel to me, as we all watch the news and monitor what's going on, that at different parts of the country, that you're seeing the same diversity of reaction in our industry as we're seeing in the country at large. So that's all he's saying. He's like, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be obstacles, right? Like some people are willing to come back to work, and others, just you know, crew members and other people, they're just like, yeah, I can afford to take the year off or you know whatever. Hopefully, because a lot of these guys work freelance and and stuff like that, or they're contractors, and so it's like, yeah, they're they're willing to be like, yeah, I'm taking a year off, and then other people are like, no, I'm, I want to get back to work. So that's very reflective of the country, right? That's all he's saying there. Um, so then they go on to uh, to talk to Dan who is uh, Dan Wilson, another producer uh, on Venom, Let There Be Carnage, and uh, or at least it says in this article. And it says, uh, um, Dan says, all these great actors and folks that we're working with have their own individual thoughts about coming back. Uh, but we're building a plan that puts as much protection around them as we possibly can. So, so again, that's all he's saying, right? Nowhere have they mentioned Venom 2 yet, and nowhere do they mention that they're referring to Venom 2 at all, right? Okay, so we're all in the clear on that. The very last thing Dan says before the article wraps up is nobody wants to go into an environment that's going to be risky, and that goes for crew members too. It's not just talent. Uh, it's everybody involved on set, he said. There's a nervousness, and that's natural and understandable. In the plans that we've discussed, they're certainly taken that into account, and we'll see where we get there, I guess. End of you know discussion between these two guys. Uh, that's all. That's all they got in there for, because they also talked to Spike Lee, I guess, and a couple other people. So that's all Vanity Fair put up there. So I said, okay, there's nothing in there that really talks about Venom. The only thing they mention is that Wilson is working with Parker on a Home Alone reboot, which is for Disney+. Plus. Uh, they were working on that when the quarantine hit, and so they were filming that, and they had to stop filming because of the quarantine. So Clearly, now that we have that context, they are referring to Home Alone. All of these quotes here, for the most part, are referring to Home Alone. I'm sure some of it can be applied to, to uh, Venom as well, but it's clear they're kind of talking about Home Alone. And here's why I say it's clear. Because it says, Wilson was working with Parker on Home Alone reboot for Disney Plus when the quarantine hit, as well as on the Venom sequel. The former, former, which means the first thing, F- Informer means first, and I think this is where MovieWeb screwed up. The former had begun shooting, which means Home Alone had started shooting and it had to stop. So when they come back from quarantine, they'll have to pick up shooting for that movie. And the latter, L-A-T-T-E-R, the latter of those two movies they discussed, Home Alone being the first, Venom 2 being the second, the latter entered post-production which means they're done filming, which we've talked about here on the show. There's been this weird thing after they uh, wrapped filming and went into post-production, which even IMDb lists them as in post-production, and Andy Serkis has said, and made a video recently, a couple weeks ago, when he was reading the uh, Lord of the Rings stuff, 
uh, he actually posted a little clip of the title uh, and he said, uh, yes, I'm still working on this movie remotely. Of course he is because they finished filming it and then he had to start editing it because they were going to release it in October. So he was working on it. Now that it's pushed back an extra year, he has more time to work on it. And sure, maybe after they get a cut of the movie, they may have to do a couple days of reshoots or a week of reshoots. We don't know. I had heard that they had squeezed in some reshoot things already before the pandemic. I had heard that while I was hearing people talk on set, but I don't know if that's true. I mean, just because people on set talk about it, it you, I still take everything with a grain of salt. You know, who knows? Um, and at that point, I think a lot of them knew that, I, you know, I was the Venom vlog guy because I started telling them, they're like, what are you doing here? Are you a big fan? And I'm like, I'm the Venom vlog guy. And, you know, and that started to get around. So, I think, you know, I, so I had to be careful what they said. I was listening to everything they said, but there was a lot of things they said that I'm like, I probably won't repeat most of this because I don't know if it's true. And some of it, if it is, you know, I don't want to spoil things for people. So, uh, but a lot of them kept pretty tight lips for the most part. But it seemed like they already got a couple things reshot already. But again, I don't know if that's true. Just, you know, don't take my word for that. That's just something I heard. So they may have to do a reshoot, but they've entered post-production. So this article makes it very clear about that. So there you go. They're they're most likely talking about Home Alone because that was the movie that stopped filming and has to come back. So let's go over to MovieWeb. Uh, this really terrible article on MovieWeb um, where MovieWeb says Venom 2 will begin filming again at some point with the movie half finished. Half finished? Where did you get that from? You cite your source as Vanity Fair. Not once in that Vanity Fair article did they mention that Venom 2 was half-finished filming. And if you followed any, if you did any research at all, you could even watch my show. I make it so easy for these big websites. And I know that they just don't know I exist, and that's fine. Uh, but we need to start telling them that I exist. Uh, because I can make your job so much easier if you just check out my show every once in a while, put it on in the background, and you'll see that I got to go to the set, that I you know, put up information, I talked about them rapping, I talked about them going in post-production. We did a whole video on what post-production really is, uh, for the most part, like you know, breaking down different jobs and stuff that people do. And because this show is like, it's about Venom, it's about me, it's about my help. It's about, uh, you know, the movie industry, how movies are made, comic books, how comic books are made. Like, we do a lot. We cover a lot of things just on this Venom show uh, because I like to illuminate things and I like to learn myself. And, uh, and, you know, a lot of these people who cover movie news or cover, you know, on YouTube or on these articles, they actually still, after years of following movies and, and content and putting articles out there, they still don't know how movies are made and they don't pay attention uh, to the stuff they write. So... This thing saying here, the movie was half finished, is made up. You made that up. Or you saw one of these other websites back in, um, I think, March. There was like one or two websites saying that the movie didn't finish filming. And then people come to me and they're like, hey, dude, you're the Venom guy. Like, you know, this said this big website, big, you know, reputable website says that the movie didn't finish filming. And I'm like, you know, that's not true. Why are you bringing this article to me? <laughs> and, and like, it's like almost like people are trying to get me at something. And I'm like, look, can I be wrong? Absolutely. But we covered all of it. You know, like, it's just, it's insane. So this article starting with the movie half finished, I'm like, right when I read that, I was like, oh, you got to be kidding me. Like, how, how do you get that from the Variety article? So if you got that from another source, you should mention what source told you that the movie was half finished and you can't say me because i never said the movie was half finished i said they finished filming and possibly even got in a couple of reshoots uh before then so um so you didn't get that information from me so you must have got it from someone out there who doesn't do their research uh so yeah this says sony pictures will need to get the cast and crew back together again to complete the sequel to 2018's blockbuster marvel comic adaptation where do you get that from like <laughs> will they have to do a reshoot Possibly they won't know until they finish a cut of the movie. Most movies typically do. They might be like, oh, we needed some ADR here or we need to uh, shoot a scene that explains this a little bit better. That happens with every movie. So that's why reshoots, when people hear that, it's not a death knell. It doesn't mean the movie's terrible. It just means they overlook something or they thought of something in post-production that they could use to improve the movie in some way and they'll go back and tweak it. So I don't know where they got this from. And then they go into the article. They go, uh, the producer were recently interviewed as part of a larger piece detailed from uncertainty surrounding the future of movie and TV production from Vanity Fair. Uh, Venom 2 officially titled Let There Be Carnage, one of the biggest movies that had to halt filming in the interest of public health. No, it didn't. Where do you get that from? It didn't have to halt production. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> they went into pre-production. 
Ah, like, I don't get it, like, at all. We saw they shot for how long in London? Like, like a mo- two months almost? Like, they were in London for a while. And then they came to San Francisco, and they were there for almost the entire month of February. And that was their original schedule. Uh, you know, we were following, you know, the um, the Fillmore uh, notices when, you know, like, because you have to get permits and all these things. And I was tracking that stuff down, and I was seeing when they were filming up to. And guess what? When March started, they left San Francisco, and they were done. Uh, I think Matrix uh, left San Francisco they still have filming to do in other cities, but I think they finished San Francisco, or maybe they have to, a little bit more to do there. But maybe you're confusing it with Matrix. I don't know. But so I, when I was reading this, I was just getting upset. I'm like, come on, like, why? Why would you say that? Like, why would you say that it got the movie had to halt filming in the interest of public health? When I d- I don't know of any any reputable source out there that said that. And it certainly didn't say that in this article. So if you got that from somewhere, you should link it. You should also link that because that sounds made up. It sounds like you, I don't know why you wanted this to be the you know clickbait article. Like that's the thing is I have a friend that works in these websites, you know, like works for certain websites and they'll tell me, they'll go, dude, I have to turn in like 10 articles this week. And I'm like, about what? And they're like, it doesn't matter. I just got to turn in 10. And I'm like, but then some of them might not be good or accurate. You won't have time to do all the research for all 10 of those. And they're just like, well, that's my job. I got to do it. And it's like, so it's frustrating. So that's why I don't want to fully blame the person who wrote this, but it's it just like, so it seemed like they just saw, like they saw Venom mentioned in this Variety article one time and they were like, let's just pull all that out and make it about Venom and make this whole thing saying Venom 2 producers address, you know, cast and crew returning. Not for Venom 2, they're not. They're not addressing it for Venom 2. They're addressing it for Home Alone Reboot. Uh, so, so yeah, and then they put in the quotes in there. Uh, Nobody wants to get into environment. That's going to be risky. All those quotes from Dan and, uh, and also, uh, Hutch and stuff. So, um, so yeah, it's it just, and then they put in this other stuff, uh, you know, until a vaccine is developed and made widely available, running a set will be tricky, practicing social distancing and other recommended safety measures, um, in an environment like that will be darn near impossible without a massive and not to mention expensive overall and the way things are done. And that's true. That's actually a, a, a very true statement. Uh, uh, it will change things for sure. Uh, but then it says, at, odds are when Venom 2 and other movies do pick back up, the set will be radically uh, be a radically different place. Yes, when other movies pick back up, they will be a different place. Venom 2 maybe will do a reshoot or two, but it is, <laughs> it's done filming. So, uh, so yeah, it's just crazy. Like, I don't know. So anyway, and like I said, I mean, there's a chance I could be wrong, but we saw, we were following everyone's social media accounts. We were following, you know, Jake's, Tom's, everybody's, Andy Circus's, and there were people going, I'm wrapped, I'm wrapped. There was, you know, DP, you know, like, a, you know, people were posting like, hey, I'm done, I'm moving on to the next thing, or, you know, whatever, uh, or I'm taking a break, or, you know, we saw all that stuff. We covered it on the show. So it's just weird to me that uh, this literally just is made up. It's just that that part of it is made up. And I think they just made up that part so they can make this article about Venom 2, and it's pretty clear, at least to me, that it wasn't. They said the former is what stopped production and has to pick back up. And the former movie they were talking about was Home Alone. That's what they mentioned first. So F in former means first. And then the latter movie, L as in last, was Venom 2. And they said that went into uh, post-production. And that's literally what the uh, the article says. So Variety's article says the movie Venom 2 was in post-production. So where does this person come up with the idea that it wasn't done filming and they had to stop in the middle of it for the safety of others which they would have if that's the case but it's not the case and variety even said it's not the case so that's why i whenever i see these like lower tier sites um post about movie news i always see if they link their source which sometimes they do and sometimes they don't when they don't that's really unprofessional um and so when I saw like they linked uh, Variety, I said, wait, that's the one I read the other day. Let me go check that out. So I clicked on it, went back and reread it. And I'm like, yep, nothing in here about Venom 2 stopping production and having to pick up later on. Nothing about that. It actually says Venom 2 went into post-production. So where does this person come up with that information? I don't know. So again, this is just a good example, a learning experience, right? Have I made mistakes like this before? Yes. So me coming at you like this, it's not me just trying to be a bully of any kind. And I certainly don't want anyone to go call you like bad at your job. I already kind of did that. I'm very abrasive on Twitter. I know I can be. I'm very positive a lot of times. Um, but uh, when I see stuff like this, I see it so often. 
it, it does kind of trigger me a little bit. And maybe that's something I have to work on and be a little bit more professional on because I saw some people going, dude, you know, I've had people in the past go, dude, if you have a problem with my article, just DM me. And I'm like, here's why I don't like that because they're like, oh, it's a, it's a professional courtesy. And I go, here's why I don't like it, though. If I DM you secretly, um, then you get to go cover it up. And make it look like you were never wrong, you know, um, because most people I've done that two or three times for people and they didn't apologize. They didn't take down the original and put up a new thing, apologizing for the old one and then in reinstating the news in a more accurate way. They just go tweak their existing thing and change the headline a little bit. And then they look like they have have always had accurate information. Unless, of course, you do a web search where you look at the website before they changed it. Um, but most people don't do that. But uh, but that's the frustrating thing. So I don't, when someone reaches out to me and go, dude, you could have DM'd me. I go, I don't know you. You're like, and I don't owe you that. Uh, I owe you a comment uh, saying, hey, this is bad journalism. And I will say that. I don't care. And I know some people are like, well, you're not going to make friends in the industry. You're not going to climb up that way. And I go, no, but I will, I will carve my own path. And that path will be a path of legitimacy where people actually come to me for news. I mean, a lot of you guys run these big websites and you have way more followers than me and people will check that out and they'll come to little old me and go, hey man, is this accurate? I mean, <laughs> so so yeah, I'm already building that reputation and I'm happy to go at a slow pace. But one day I hope to be at a bigger site or be at a place uh, like this and I hope to bring more integrity and more accurate news to them. Um, so I'm starting now and so this is your chance. Websites, try to be more accurate. Try to do a little bit of research. Uh, and like I said, I even offered other YouTubers. There's other YouTubers who are much bigger than me, 150,000, 200,000 subscribers. And uh, and they're like, they'll message me on you know on Twitter and go, hey, is this accurate? You know, and I'm and I'll go, oh, let me look at it. I don't mind helping people out, man. It's it's not about the glory or anything for me. I just want accurate information out there. That's all I care about. That's what any journalist cares about is the truth. And then if you go make your big 150,000, you know, uh, subscriber follower, you know, video about it and 150,000 people, you know, or the chance of 150,000 people seeing your video and you get all those clicks that I don't get on my channel, at least I know truth is being delivered to them. And that's what you owe your audience when you have, you, when you're on a website, when you're doing articles, when you're a journalist, you owe them the truth. You don't owe them manipulation. You don't owe them lies. You don't owe them this stuff. Like you don't, you don't program people. Um, you, you, you give them information. And this is a weird uh, like thing to screw up, like especially when the Variety article says that the Venom movie went into post-production. So I don't get it, but you know, hey, MovieWeb and the person who wrote this, do better next time. That's my opinion. You don't have to agree with me, but no, I don't owe you a, a DM. I don't owe you like a secret, like, hey man, here, go clean it up. You know, no, you look like an idiot by putting stuff up like this. I've looked like an idiot before. I probably will again in the future. You can rub it in my face at that time. You could do it publicly if you want. Uh, that's fine. Uh, I don't expect, you know, because, and if you didn't, if you came and DM'd me, I would still make it public. I would go, hey, this person called me out for getting this wrong, and it was wrong, so I'm deleting this article or this video, and I'm going to post a new video in its place explaining what I got wrong, and I apologize. I've done that on this channel before, and I'll continue to do it in the future because that's what you do when you make mistakes. Uh, but something like this, just irked me and I wanted to talk about it. I had a lot to say about it. And uh, and as you saw, like I said, I'm very blunt on social media. I come across unlikable if, I, if I'm if i you know aggressive towards you. I get it, I totally get it. Uh, but hear me out, <laughs> you know, like yes, I'm blunt, but I'm trying to make a point. And plus I've noticed that when I've tiptoed around it before, people aren't receptive to that. So yeah, now I'm blunt because at least I get their attention. And that's all I want is their attention so that they know to do better next time. At least I hope, and I'm sure this person will, and I'm sure this person has other articles where they did a great job and they did a bunch of research and I get it. And I get it. I get that your job is to pump 10 of these articles out a week. This is an article that didn't need to happen though. This is ridiculous. And this is very amateur in my opinion. And so um, yeah, lesson learned. Uh, so thank you guys for watching this. Let me know what you think down below. I'm going to put a link to the movie web article and the variety article down below uh, because those are both the sources I used in this video. So go check them out yourself and let me know what you think of all this. And, uh, you know, get, let's get some hype down there for Venom 2. Uh, let there be carnage. What are you excited about? You know, do you think Comic-Con's, you know, you know, the Comic-Con at home is coming up in like a month and a half in uh, San Diego, but they're going to do like a home version. So if there's something cool that I can like live stream or watch or something uh, that's Venom related or Morbius related, we will definitely cover it. And so hopefully we'll get some kind of news or something at that point too. Uh, some official image, official poster teaser trailer, something, I don't know, it'd be awesome. But uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments down below and we'll continue the conversation down there. 
Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.